everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to OCP. It is so exciting to see all of you. The crowd is even bigger than ever, and every year I love coming here to see everyone here and, and connect with everyone. I think the crowd this year is bigger than ever, and it's a testament to the role that we all play in open physical infrastructure in the middle of this AI revolution we're going through. That's why it's getting bigger and bigger every year at OCP. So let's step back and think a little bit about that AI revolution. It is transforming everything. Everything about the way we play, the way we work, and the way we live. And we've, let me just do a softball here for everyone. Raise your hand if you have used some sort of generative AI. You've interacted with a large language model, You've, you've generated a fun sticker on your phone or customized the picture. That, that should have been everybody. Everybody, right? And if you, if you have access to one of Meta's applications, the family applications, whether Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, you have that, the power in your pocket, right? That is uh, being used by billions of users all around the world, powered by our, our large language models, a Llama. Let's take a look at how companies are using Llama today. Companies are using it to help us have more fun. And who doesn't want to have more fun? Between uh, generating new content, improving the characters that we play with in an AI uh, game, or just making shopping a better experience. All of these are use cases that are being uh, driven by Llama. AI and Llama are, are also transforming business to business, helping companies automate, secure, and grow their businesses. And finally, probably one of the most inspiring applications of AI is medical and healthcare. By providing health, better improved healthcare to millions of people and to provide more equitable access, I think this is, this is so promising and we are really at the beginning of this journey uh, with AI and medicine. And the reason I say we're at the beginning is just remember, all of this has really sprung onto the scene in the last couple of years. We contributed our Llama 2 model with its open and permissive license just 15 months ago. And all of those cases and tens of thousands of more derivative models have been based on Llama already. And this year with Llama 2, we contributed multimodal, multilingual capabilities, longer context windows, enhanced reasoning, and just a few weeks ago, we showed models that can run on phones and mobile devices, lip syncing, and all these other capabilities. The pace is moving unbelievably. In fact, if you think about Llama, it's, it's somewhat becoming the, the Linux for AI models. And we here in the OCP community know a little bit about something about the power of Linux and openness to drive innovation, right? And so we're seeing that same sort of uh, use within the, the AI model space with over 400 million downloads, um, thousands and thousands of derivative models. This is the power of openness uh, at all layers of the stack. So let's talk about that stack and how we build it. What is the infrastructure underneath? So there's physical infrastructure, software infrastructure, and then models and models infrastructure. And Meta has been active in driving innovation and openness at all of those layers. Between Llama, of course, PyTorch, the premium uh, software development for, uh, framework for AI, and now here at the physical infrastructure with OCP. So let's delve now into OCP uh, and what we do, Meta, with, uh, with the whole community here today. Um, we've been busy looking at all the different AI components that come together in our large clusters. So on behalf of the dozens of teams, hundreds of people at Meta and, and at companies here in the audience, we are, uh, we've got a lot to share. So let's, let's jump in. Our first big announcement is I want to welcome AMD to our Meta AI family. We have taken the AMD MI300X processor, incorporated it into our Grand Teton platform, and created Grand Teton Inference. Uh, our, our new platform for uh, large-scale inference at Meta. In particular, we're taking advantage of the large HBM capacity and bandwidth afforded by MI300, but all within the same power envelope. And in fact, if you've been using Meta AI, Llama 3 today, on all those applications, 
I'm pretty certain you've been going through and being served by this, uh, this platform already because it serves a vast majority of our Llama 3 large-scale inference. So that's the first big announcement. Welcome again, AMD, to the Meta AI family. Yeah. All right, let's zoom out a little bit because the models that we need to train require larger and larger clusters. And not just space large, but we also have to increase the density. What's in the rack? So today we're announcing Catalina, our next generation rack scale infrastructure. And this is big. This is big. I'm going to go big here. Um, Catalina is based upon um, NVIDIA GB200. It includes 72 GPUs across two racks, all in one scale-up domain. And to get that amount of compute, that amount of flops into this rack, we've really had to rethink a lot of the components of that rack. First of all, power. That many GPUs requires a lot of power. And our previous uh, ORV3 generations, 12 kilowatts, 18 kilowatts, we had to really rethink this. This is 140 kilowatts that this rack, can, uh, this system can support. 140 kilowatts. Think about that a little bit. Um, now, along with great number of GPUs, great amount of power, you also need great cooling. So you can see the the facility uh, compatible uh, facility liquid cooling compatible um, infrastructure that we've built into the rack to handle all of that uh, uh, power and uh, and cooling. Now, this rack infrastructure is super modular and flexible, so we've had to build in uh, integrated management. And we thought of modularity and flexibility from the beginning so that it can accommodate the evolution of our uh, AI needs. So again, our second big announcement today, Catalina, rack scale infrastructure uh, and design. So thanks to all the different teams that have been part and working on this. <laughs> now, a note here when we build rack scale infrastructure, we think about power and cooling space. It's really important that we do this in collaboration with the community here at OCP. Collaborating on infrastructure ensures that we're getting the best and brightest minds from all different perspectives working together. And Meta and Microsoft in particular have had a long partnership within OCP, working on the network, open accelerators, and open storage. So continuing that spirit of collaboration, I'm excited to share that Meta and Microsoft are working on the power problem that I just covered. How do we provide even more scalable and disaggregated power to our AI clusters? This is the Mount Diablo project. Uh, our friends from Microsoft will be covering more of this today, and you'll see more of that uh, in the upcoming uh, months. So we've taken, we've taken a look at the, the next generation GPU that we're using for inference. We've looked at the next generation rack scale infrastructure. Now, how do we bring this all together? How do we bring together thousands, tens of thousands of these accelerators all into the data center network? Now, Meta has had a whole history of working on networking through uh, OCP, building and, and working on switches through the last, um, through the last decade, really. But what we've had to do now for the AI clusters is rethink all of the pieces from the NICs, which we haven't worked on too much before, but from the NICs to the switches, and then even how they come together as fabrics. So there are a lot of announcements here today because we've been busy working and rethinking all of these. So the first one I'll start with is at the NIC layer. The NIC layer is really important because it's the on-ramp for those hosts into the network. It's the way that all the hosts talk to all the tens of thousands of other hosts uh, in the cluster. So you've heard how Meta has been developing our own silicon for accelerators. I'm happy to share that, we are, uh, that we've developed our first silicon for networking, uh, in this case, an, an ASIC for a NIC that's targeted for compute platforms. The module for this NIC is an, OC, an open OCP NIC that has been developed with Marvell, and they're contributing that uh, to OCP uh, today. And then in, again, in the spirit of openness, the driver, the software for this, has already been upstreamed into Linux. And so part one of our networking is the NICs at the hosts. 
Now if I step back and look at the switches, the large training clusters drive a tremendous amount of bandwidth talking to the storage and compute clusters. So we saw that we had to upgrade our switch infrastructure to 51T really as soon as possible to accommodate AI. So there are two switches that we're um, proud to announce and contribute here today. Uh, Mini Pack 3, built with Celestica, and it includes a Broadcom Tomahawk 5 ASIC. And then the Cisco 8501, which includes a G200 51T ASIC, that is also being contributed as an OCP-inspired design uh, today. Both of these switches run SCI, which is an open uh, project here at OCP, and they also run the open source FBOSS uh, operating system. NICs, switches, now let's think fabrics. Our existing generation of fabrics have been built on these large-scale chassis switches, and that's taken us uh, really far, but what we saw that we needed more control, more flexibility to get to the scale on, uh, that we need for our clusters. So we took all of the goodness inside that switch, a lot of the, the reliability and lossless characteristics that are needed for AI, and we disaggregated that. We took that, uh, made it scale across the whole data center into something we call the disaggregated scheduled fabric, DSF. DSF provides that same lossless reliable fabric that was in one switch now spread out across the whole data center. It's been tuned for AI. The concepts of, of a scheduled fabric are not new, but we've had to really tune this for AI and make it work at a building level scale and building distances. Now, DSF has that intelligence within the fabric, and by doing that, it provides us the flexibility we, can, we need to plug in different generations and different types of accelerators and NICs, all the different capabilities. So it makes it easier for us to accommodate that diversity by having some of that logic in the fabric. And we're contributing two switches along with Arista that comprise DSF. Uh, based upon Broadcom, uh, Ramon, and Jericho chips. So all pieces of the network we've been touching and driving innovation in openly from the NICs to the switches to the fabrics. So that's a whole lot there. And if you take away anything from today, you should, you should realize that Meta passionately believes in openness, and it's critical for open AI systems and infrastructure. We think, actually, from the top of our company all the way through, that the future of AI must be open. It must be open so that all of us can work together on it. It must be open so that we ensure that it's, it's available and equitable and usable by everyone. That's why we drive innovation on all these layers in an open fashion. Llama, PyTorch, and here with Open Compute Project. Openness ensures that we have a robust ecosystem like we have here at OCP. Openness provides opportunities all up and down the stack. And so with that here, especially at OCP today, we encourage you to participate in the Open Systems for AI initiative. As George mentioned, we've kicked off in the last couple of years. That's just going to keep on expanding, and we're excited about that. It's going to keep on going. Right? I think Everything that we've seen, the models drive larger and larger uh, requirements. It's almost, it's almost quaint to think that the Llama 2 was, <laughs> was trained on a couple of thousand uh, GPUs, and look where we are today. It's not stopping, it's keeping on going, um, and it's gonna drive our infrastructure to new heights. I think it's, it's, the future of AI is open, it's inspiring, but it's also challenging. So on behalf of all of the, the folks at Meta who've been working on these projects, uh, thank you all for, uh, for working with us. Uh, we, in, we have talks and demos all throughout the week. We encourage you to connect with us. Um, really excited about this. Let's build open systems for AI together. Thank you. <laughs>